Well, Todd, took a lot of time, a couple of destroyed cities, and a worldwide power outage, but I managed to get PC parts down here in the void and build a new PC. Now I can actually make the videos I want, have better quality, and I don't have to use the equivalent of a LeapFrog gaming tablet to edit videos. Yeah, yeah, cool. I have big news. Elder Scrolls 6? Yep. You're kidding. Nope. We're gonna make it a complete copy of Mount and Blade Warband. Are you fu- Well, actually, that's not so bad. Mountain Blade is a game that takes place in the hollow, deprived, and cursed place known as Europe. However, in this timeline, the English and Germania stole even more in Europe than our own world, leading to the most English thing ever, stealing ideas from Asia, in this case, clan warfare. Hell, even the Middle East got in on the English trademark of cultural appropriation. As a result, everyone is in a constant state of war. That's where you join in. After your daily duties as an Englishman of being mugged and stabbed in an alleyway, you are given a sword, some money, and are set off to change the course of history. Hey, drop, drop, drop AVP, please. There is much to do in the world of Mountain Blade, and it is entirely up to you to decide what to do. Recruiting men should be your first priority, as without an army you can't really fight much, because if you did not know, finding 17 people in armor with big swords and axes is very hard with only yourself and two peasants backing you. But people are expensive, so you have to pay them a weekly wage and get food to keep them from starving and to keep their morale up. Generally, the main way you get people on your side early on is by going to small villages and asking around for volunteers. However, asking for military help amongst the unmoshed medieval masses may not produce the most capable men, but if you spend money towards the betterment of your men, you can upgrade them into slightly more competent soldiers. On top of being a fast and easy way of recruiting men to your cause of questionable moral standing, villages will be one of the most common things you will interact with, whether it be buying and selling the spoils of war, or threatening an entire village for one wheel of cheese. Bigger cities have even more to do, and have dedicated retailers for weapons, armor, and general goods. One of the many things you can do is fight in an arena. This led me down into the most broken part of this game I have come across. Arenas will sometimes have giant practice duels between the months of having no tournaments, because men who are only trained to fight will inevitably want to fight. You can join these duels at any time for free. These duels also give you experience for the types of weapons that matter, and you can level up through them. You can also earn money through them based on your performance. Time also doesn't pass when in the arena, meaning your troops pay won't come around while playing and food won't run out. It was here that I discovered I am absolutely, uh, what's a cool kid word? Cracked at this mode. So I farmed for three and a half levels of experience and 530 denards in what amounts to one and a half seconds of in-game time. However, if you aren't a god amongst men, how else can you earn money? through quest rewards or battles. After finishing a battle, you can usually get an immediate sum of money and then sell off your enemy's clothing and weapons later. There are also plenty of quests that I'm pretty sure are somewhat randomly generated. These quests can be super dynamic and play out in a lot of different ways. For example, I was given a quest to rescue someone's daughter who was being held ransom. They gave me the money to pay the ransom, so I traveled there, met with the bandits, and got the daughter no problem. However, on my way back, a group of outlaw bandit people came up to me and said, Hey, get the fuck off our road or pay the toll, dumbass. So I, a responsible and rational leader who is leading people who probably have families back home said, Fuck off, how the fuck can you own a road that's only here because people's horses stomp on it all the time? Get that weak shit out of your- Look at my army, you idiot, you can't fight me. Being AI, the bandit said, alright, a fight it is. Now, I went into this fight feeling confident. However, the first sign something was terribly awry was that the daughter I had just rescued was standing in the middle of soldiers charging into battle like everyone else. I thought, okay, that's fine. My guys could beat these guys. I've done all these other times. Why not this time? I'll just have them stand their ground and defend the daughter. We'll pull through. The daughter was the first one to die. Then I was knocked out and captured. And that was the end of my playthrough. This game is pretty good. You are not just a normal human. You are the devil. Help! 
Mountain Blade's gameplay can only be described as an early 2000s version of Chivalry of Mordhau, which is funny because this game came out in 2010. When leading an army, the 1, 2, and 3 keys are bound to the three groups of every army, infantry, archers, and mounts respectively. After making the groups hear you, you can use the function keys, because game developers hate convenience, to give orders surrounding engagement, formations, movement, etc. This works pretty well, aside from the controls and presents the opportunity for some crazy micromanagement. Management. Unfortunately, this is sadly unused in multiplayer, and if there is a mode that incorporates it, the absolutely incredible community doesn't play it. To pick a loadout, you follow these simple steps. 1. Literally any weapon. 2. Best chest and head armor you can in the minimum leg and glove armor. 3. Play video game. As long as you can adapt to different weapons, you can use pretty much anything. However, if you are a smooth brain like myself, who, every night, they can't floss properly without wrapping the floss so tight around their fingers, they turn purple, swinging a two-handed weapon like an ogre with Parkinson's works just fine. Unlike games like Mordhau, which use 360 degrees of movement to aim which direction you want the slash to go and have a separate action for stabbing, Mountain Blades uses a four-way attack system with one of these directions being the respective weapon stab. There are a bunch of different settings for how you want to control your fighting, however, outside of maybe keyboard directions, using the mouse is the only really reliable way to aim, so that you can aim the opposite way the enemy is blocking, instead of having attack and block directions decided by whatever the developers put in to decide the inputs. I could see automatic directions being serviceable for casual single player playthroughs, however, the other forms of input are immediately obsolete in multiplayer. You need to be able to move while your swinger block is the other way, because the game uses four-way directions. Movement and positioning are even more important than the game's other sword fighting counterparts. Range combat is slightly different than you would expect. Pulling back on a bow will cause your accuracy to continually decrease, represented by the crosshair moving towards the edge of your screen. Moving while having a bow drawn back will also make aiming significantly less accurate. Muskets are another weapon added in the game's Napoleonic Wars DLC, which brings me to... Mountain Blade with Fire and Sword is just Mountain Blade Warband, except it has flintlock guns. Now you may be saying, Warband has guns, with Napoleonic Wars, which is true. But hold on one minute. Both are $10, but one is DLC that feels unfinished, although I will admit it has an insane amount of content for DLC, but the other is an entirely new game, with a new setting based off Poland and Eastern Russia, has all new weapons added from Napoleonic Wars, actually has a new campaign, and refines the quest from Warband, even adding new types, while costing less than the base game of Warband, while having arguably better content than the base game of Warband, plus its two DLCs, which may I remind you that Warband and its DLC cost $45 when purchased separately and 38 as a bundle. Hey Tail Worlds, what kind of bullshittery are you trying to play here? Are you aware that we are in the middle of a global recession? Sadly, the intelligent folks who play Mountain Blade haven't figured this out yet, with Warband being the second most played Mountain Blade game out right now, only behind its sequel, which may I remind you is really with Fire and Sword's sequel. So, out of spite, and because I am just that petty, I will not be referring to Napoleonic Wars for the rest of the video, and I will instead refer to with Fire and Sword for the musket combat. I did not hit her, it's not true, it's bullshit, I did not hit her, I did not. Anyways, muskets are pretty similar to crossbows in that they get less accurate over time, a lot slower than bows, and they take a while to reload. Muskets are generally very, very, very slightly less accurate than crossbows, and they have the same reload time as crossbows, but you can now move while reloading, and they usually kill in one hit. This makes muskets the best weapon in the game. Your loadout should either be the best musket, two quality bullet stacks, and the best sword you can afford, and in the free armor, or middling muskets, middling pistol, one quality bullet stack. There's no reason not to use muskets, and if you're on a horse, oh, be prepared to hit the top of the leaderboard. If you want to play hold fast, play this game instead. With Fire and Sword, Napoleonic Wars have pretty much the same combat, both with muskets and melee combat, and a much more active player base. If you want sword fighting, Mordhau is where it's at. However, Mordhau is filled with some pretty cracked players that will punch you to death and dodge your attacks like a professional boxer while dressed as Little Mac. I give Mountain Blade 4 captured POWs out of 5. Speaking of Mordhau, now that I have a better computer, I can record more intensive games, and because there's 100% not enough content in Mordhau to make a separate video for it, I'm just going to throw in some clips that I recorded.
No fucking way. Oh my god. It's... It's the real Fred Flintstone. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Have you seen the news? Why would I watch the news? To keep up on current events. I don't know if you've noticed. We're not in current events. We're here. I mean, just look at the view outside my window. What view? Exactly. Well, in current events, an apocalypse happened, apparently over a Radiant card. Like what idiot can't just get a 2080 Ti, YAMD? Oh, yeah. At the... Uh... That sounds pretty stupid. Anyways, I was thinking, we could get great content out of this. Yeah, but how are we gonna get the footage for it? We just send in some human drones, you control them, and capture the footage. Oh, that's what the screaming was. Oh, it's, uh, 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 oh, it's, uh,